Hi everyone, welcome again. This is the part um, uh, Unit 3, Lesson 11, Approaches to Course Design. Sorry for the interruption. Uh, I really need to <laughs> have a, a little bit of refreshment so that um, I could continue my discussion. Let us now begin again with the Lesson 3. Okay. So I'm sharing my screen again. Let's have the lesson 11, Approaches to Course Design. We, of course, in a, we always design different courses. And in the previous lesson, you learned the importance of deeds analysis. So in alam natin bakit, um, what is the reason why uh, people study. So balikan natin ang very, very light. Let's have a recap. Um, with, the, with this one, we had the framework for analyzing the learner's needs. So why are they taking the course? How do the learners learn? What are the resources available? Who are the learners? What will the ESP course take place? Um, when will the ESP course take place? So we do needs analysis because we want to know what the student, what the students want, what the student wants, and how will we do the, this activity? Paano natin siya? How we will we discuss it? How will um, what is the extent? I remember um, when it comes to there's a big difference, pala, when it comes to industry and academe. Sa industry, it's I was actually shocked because when I was teaching ESP in the for flight attendants, um, I was told that a little bit I could I could improve. Now I'm not saying when it comes to the methods that I'm using is actually should be different when I, if I will be teaching um, flight attendants when I'm training because I must be more straightforward than I must be straightforward. And in academe, we cannot be straightforward because we care about the feelings of the people, but when it comes to, especially our students, but when it comes to the flight attendants, it's better that they know it directly. Like, for example, in, in um, in, when, in flight attendant, if you saw that their acting is, it's, it's ugly. Ang pangit. Ano yan? Walang kwenta. You could say that directly to them. But when it comes to academe, it's 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 not. We need to think first. Okay. So now we'll have the approaches to course design. Um, what is a course design? It is uh, according to Hutchinson and Waters, it is the process by which the raw data about a learning need is interpreted. This will create uh, this will create an integrated series of teaching learning experiences. It aims to lead the learners to a particular state of knowledge. It uses the theoretical and empirical information available to produce a syllabus. It also used to select, adapt, and write materials under the syllabus and uh, develop a methodology for teaching those materials. In making a course design, you must ask this question. What do we do with the information we have gathered? And there it mean, okay, so those are the course design. So a course design is, uh, will begin with the steps, with different things. Like for instance, um, a course design will begin with the raw things. Ano ba yung kailangan laman ng isang course? And then little by little, as we develop it, it will become eventually a syllabus, a course design, a curriculum. So makikita natin kung because of the things that we need, we, we gathered all of the information. So it's the process in which we are gathering everything. So yun yun. Now, there are different types of course design. We have the language-centered, skill-centered, and learning-centered. So let us discuss first the language-centered course design. This is the most straightforward course design. It is also most familiar to English teachers. It aims to draw a direct connection between the analysis of the target situation and the content of the ESP course. Now, um, a language-centered approach to course design is, uh, we will begin with this one. 
when we identify the learner's target situation and select the theoretical views of language, we then create a syllabus. Then afterwards, we design materials to exemplify the syllabus items and then establish procedure to test the acquisition of the syllabus item. So we will begin with these two, then pa dami na pa dami, hanggang sa nagtitest na tayo. As you notice, the diagram is in the logical procedure. It is known that is it has many weaknesses and of course drawbacks with its design. Actually, sa simula pa lang makita natin, parang may mali. Parang kulang. Hindi naman mali. Kulang. It starts with the target learners what they need. It may seem that it is a learner-centered approach, but it is not. The learner is used as means of identifying the target situation. The learners are used solely to locate the restricted area. Therefore, the learner plays no part in the process. This model is not learner-centered, but a learner-restricted. So as you can see with the first one, you want to identify the learner's target situation. Hindi siya learner-centered, but learner-restricted. Bakit? Kasi ang hinanap mo lang is what the learner needs. Be, um, yung gusto lang nila. But what we need to do is the, not just their needs. But also what, um, I mean, not just they want, but also they need. Their needs. Kasi di ba parang pag kunwari, oh, ano gusto niyo matutunan ngayon ang atin sa ating klase? So, grammar po, alin dun? Okay, so yun ay discussion natin. So, hindi dapat ganun. Okay, been very restricted siya. Hindi siya learner-centered, pero learner-restricted. Now, letter B, it is criticized for being a fixed and unbending procedure which can take a little account of conflicts and contradictions inherent in human any human endeavor. After the initial analysis of the target, the situation is done. The course designer is locked into a continuous process. However, it is the, if the initial examination is wrong, um, there are some crucial elements such as unexpected motivational attitude of MEADS students. Um, any procedure must have versatility, feedback channels, and error tolerance. Now, it appears to be systematic though. Pero, uh, it is said that learners uh, learn by fitting individual items of knowledge together to create a meaningful predictive system. Learning must be internally generated system and not an imposed system. So, hindi na, nakikita nila dito na parang... Uh, since very restricted nga siya sa gusto ng learners, it is, it's like you imposed it. Okay, so dapat daw ang learning internally generated. So parang it's, um, parang ganito lang siya. Um, parang sinabi mo dun sa, uh, eto, eto dapat to. Eto yung target niya. But it's not just about that. It's about dapat sa, you will help the, uh, you'll help the students to learn how to think yung thought process nila, dun lang naman yung tuturuan mo sila and then bahala na sila mag-generate nun. Like for example, ito na lang. I mean, um, let's use this um, psychology. I, I mean, for example, you gave an, a, pro a project to your students and you said, okay, I want you to have a book review. Use uh, 8.5 by 11 size of paper. Um, number Times New Roman 12. Um, spacing is double, only two pages. And then, um, here are the guide questions. Okay, so yun. And then, um, that is your book review, for example. Book report or movie review, okay. But, that is very restricted. Now, when you ask the students, it's up to you. What do you want? Okay, so you could design. You could decide. I remember when I said that to my students, nagulat ako. Merong iba naka-standy, may iba naka-papil lang, may mga iba naka-scrapbook and whatsoever. They have different designs about what they want. So it's it's not, it's restricted to isa-isa, pero at least you know, there's an importance naman doon. At least you know. Madali na siyang itignan. Okay, madali siyang i-record. 
The language-centered model gives no acknowledgement of factors that in must inevitably play part in creating a course. Data is produced by the needs analysis. What happened is in an analytical model is also being misused at a predictive model. So language-centered analysis of the target situation is only the surface level. Masyado siyang mababaw. So they want to, we, what we want to do is to dig deeper. And now we'll have the skill-centered course design. So kanina, um, language-centered, now it's the skill center. It applies in many countries, particularly in Latin America. English texts in universities and college are not available in the mother tongue. Uh, the, this course is founded on two fundamental principles, one theoretical and one pragmatic. So, um, theoretical hypothesis, it, aim, it aims to get away from the surface performance data and look at the competence that underlies a performance. A skill-centered course will present its learning objectives in terms of both performance and competence. So, theoretical uh, is about... Um, Surf, uh, get away from the surface performance. It means that it's not just um, what the syllabus wants. parang it has something to do more with uh, performance. Yeah. And next is a pragmatic. That that, that is skill centered. Kaya nga siya skill centered. So theoretically speaking, more on performance. Siya. And now for the pragmatic, this is based from Widow Saw 1981 between goal oriented courses and process oriented courses by Holmes 1982. According to him, um, in ESP, the chief problem is usually one of the time available and student experience. First, aims to be identified in terms of what is desirable. Also, students may be their first year studies with the little experience in the specialism of literature. On the other hand, sabi din dito na, uh, the contradiction that arises from interpreting need in the limited sense of target situation. Okay, so your necessities. So, medyo technical lang ng very, very light siya. But it's very understandable naman. So, pragmatic. Uh, ano siya? This is from goal-oriented courses and process-oriented. Okay. Next is process-oriented approach. It is realistic in concentrating on strategies and process. This helps students be aware of their abilities and potential, which motivates them to address targets, uh, target text independently after the end of the course to continue to improve. So, compared dun sa una na parang nakikita natin dito na medyo restricted siya kung ano yung gusto ng sojante. Pero dito, it's, um, we're helping them to to function. To baga, kung baga pag natuto sila, kaya nila, they will use their knowledge on their own. Okay. Next is skill-centered model. It is response of the idea that um, of specific English registers um, as basis of ESP and practical constraints on learning imposed by limited time and resources. Sabi dito, it aims not to provide specific corpus of language knowledge, linguistic knowledge, but it makes the learners better processors of information. Kasi nga, we, we are helping them to understand more. Diba? Here, roles of the needs analysis, it provides a foundation for discovering underlying competence that allows one to perform the target situation. So, ang pag daw nakita natin to, um, matuturoan natin yung bata na, na mag-function sila in a way na uh, hindi, na, for example, parang um, nakita nila yung need, okay, parang after your course, kasi titrain mo sila, we. so yung mga sample mo, is has something to do with how they will respond. Okay. In this situation, so tinuturoan natin sila, what are the appropriate response? So it allows the designer of the course to discover the potential, knowledge, and abilities that the learners bring to the ESP. The third word that I will be using today is human rights. The third word is human rights. Now, um, skill-centered approach, uh, for your bonus, yun, uh, human rights. The skill-centered approach claims the following. It views language as a mind 
of the learner process. It builds on the positive factor that the learners bring the course and its objective are in open-ended terms. This enables learners to achieve something. So, a theoretical views of learning, so tingnan natin flowchart. Um, uh, we usually have um, identify the target situation and then we analyze kung ano yung mga skills ng strategies na required para makuha natin yung target. Then that's the time that we will write the syllabus. Now, after writing the syllabus, we will, siyempre may syllabus ka na, that's the time that you will select text and write exercises to focus on skills, strategies in the syllabus. Then, we will, uh, of course, meron na tayo, nakita, nakakuha na tayo ng text, at saka tayo maghahanap ng mga evaluation strategies. Okay, yun yun. Okay, so learning-centered approach. Um, learner determines learning. Teachers can influence what we teach, but the learners alone determine what uh, learners learn. Since learning is an internal process, it depends on the learner's knowledge, ability, motivation to use it. In addition to that, learning is not just a mental process. It is a negotiation process between individuals in the society. In this learning process, we will reject the term, a learner-centered approach, because the learner is only a factor to consider in the learning process. Learner-centered will be misleading. So, contrary to what we usually know, um, dito medyo misleading ang learner-centered. Now, um, naka, um, alam na natin to kanina, we have discussed. So, ano ba yung ba ng, ng ibawat isa? So, a language-centered approach. This is the nature of the target situation performance and that will determine the ESP course. So, yung mga targets, a language-centered. Now, a skill-centered approach will say, tama na, we must look behind the target data to discover that um, target performance data, to discover what process enables someone to perform. I know yun. And a learner-centered approach is that's enough either we must look beyond the competence um, that enables someone to perform because what we really want to discover is not the competence itself but how someone acquires the competence. So as you can see, palalim ng palalim yung mga different approach nila because uh, through time, nakikita nila yung needs. Anaga arise yung mga needs. Okay. Okay. This diagram. Okay, let's try this flowchart. So a learning-centered approach course design. The first thing we do is to identify the learners. So how do we identify the learners? We analyze the learning situation and analyze the target situation, um, the theoretical views of learning ng bawat isa. Now, with this, Pag na inanalyze na natin yung learning situation, we could identify the different attitudes, potential of the learners, and identify the needs. Okay, kanina once ha, ngayon needs. So after that, we will write a syllabus. With this one naman, analyze the situation and identify the skills. Kanina, wants and needs, ngayon skills. And then, then we write the syllabus. Then afterwards, we go for evaluation. At ulit-ulit na ang ating discussion. Okay? So that's it for the lesson 3. Now we will have the lesson 4. Okay? So another ano natin yun? Another lesson. Stop sharing ko muna. Bye-bye!